I held a lot of bitterness against my father who was never in my life. Even the day he died, I didn't care. You know, so what, man? What does it mean? When I care, I don't know that turkey. But there was one time in my, in my walk with the Lord, he said, you can't move further till you forgive your father. I'm like, he dead. God don't matter that they did. All truth about you will come out of you. You still, the moment I kneel down, I said, Father, I forgive my father for not being in my life. And I mean, it came out angrily. But you know who got a folly release from that? It was me. So it wasn't about him being dead and me forgetting. It was about God telling me, until you get that thing out your heart, you can't go no further. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Let's read that again. Having agreed with God about my sinful behavior, I now ask his forgiveness through Christ and openly acknowledge that I am forgiven according to the scripture. Praise the Lord, we did all that. Since we are in James, let's look at chapter 4, verse, verse 10. James 4, verse 10. And it says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall what? Lift you up. Humble yourself. Forgiveness is also an act of humility. Amen? Amen. Amen. Since we're down there too, let's go to 1 John. Oh, I know where this one is going. 1 John, next book over. After 2 Peter. 1 John, chapter 1, starting at verse 8. And it says, if you say, if we say that we have no sin, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And what? To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the word is not in us. Amen. So, we all have sinned. And we need to confess that sin on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. Go to chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. 1 and 2. It says, My little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. That means a person standing between us and God. Amen? With the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is our propitiation. You know what that word propitiation means? Mercy seed. He is the one who took it for us. He's our mercy seat. Amen? Mm -hmm. For our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the who? Whole world. He did it for the whole world. I love that. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you so much for that, Jesus. All right, let's go to Psalms 27. Psalms 27. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Psalms 27, looking at verses 13 and 14. I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That's what our problem is. We don't want to wait. And sometimes waiting means meditate with God. Sit with God. Ask me, well, God, what do you want me to do? I was telling Ryan a little earlier today, I wanted to get vengeance. You know, I wanted to just go ahead and take care of this situation myself. But the Lord kept telling me to wait. But see, I was still honest with God. See, our problem is, when we forget is that God already knows the intent of our heart. So I sit up there and tell God, oh, my mess. I mean, he's just that real to me. God, I want to go get this thing done. I want to go and set this up. Matter of fact, I want to plan the same devious stuff that they did against me. Mm. I want to get them back. And the Lord says, you better wait. You better wait. Now, you can go do that and lose your blessing if you want to, but you better wait. Mm. And I waited. Because, see, when you're hurt, thank you, Lord. I'm going to go there right now. Go to Matthew. 18. Stacy, I'm going to take them there. We're meeting just there. I might have said this to y'all before. Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Because I'm starting to feel that thing in here about unforgiveness and hurt and pain among some of you. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and show you what the Lord showed me. If you are feeling hurt and someone hurts you, here's the steps that God tells us that we need to take. Ready? Amen. Matthew 18. And 18. I said Matthew 18, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Matthew 18, starting at verse 15, it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. See that comma there? Everybody see the comma? Right. Pay attention to the comma. If your body comes and hurts you and do something wrong in you, come. Now, if you're in Christ, that comma says, check your love love. Check your heart of forgiveness. Check how many times God forgave you. One of the greatest things I always tell myself, God, you know, you forgive me for so much. Who am I to stop forgiving? Because you forgave me so much, I'm going to keep forgiving. So he says, check your love level. Then, watch this. More about that brother trespass against me. Check your love level. Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. It don't mean you come around and broadcast never. You know, so and so did this to me. You know, did that. Man, you know he ain't no good. She ain't no good. See, now you're broadcasting it and you're starting rumors on folk. Because all they hear was your part of the story. And there's always two sides of the story. Yours, the person that hurt you, and God who sits in the truth. Because everybody exaggerates their story. <laughs> Come on. So it says, go tell that person to him alone. And if he shall hear you, thou will gain your brother. Now, how that man will hear me? If I'm coming up to him and talking about, no man, you hurt me. Now I'm going to religious. And I forgive you. You going to forgive me? You'll be looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> what kind of heart is that? I'm going to religious. I forgive you anyway. You hurt me. Jail, because my heart wasn't right. Oh, well, beating up a beat. 
shocked. Because it was in my heart to hurt that person. But then watch this. Two years later, I forgave that individual wholeheartedly. And the Lord told me to buy him a Christmas present. Now I had another problem. Feeling good? Only last a couple minutes, don't it? Amen. 
This is not open like for I fought up and down, crawled and cried, beat myself up, and even still surprised I'm standing here. But I'm not standing here without the grace and the glory of God in my life. Amen. Because I tell you right now, if it wasn't for the grace and glory of God in my life, I would still be getting high. I would still be fornicating. I would still be lying and cheating and stealing. Mm -hmm. But it's because I love Jesus Christ that I'm standing here. My love for him is greater than any woman I could ever marry. So if I love you, I'm not going to hurt you. And sin hurts Jesus. Why do I want to keep hurting someone I claim to love? <laughs> hmm. Do you realize that every time you sin, and this is Warren, it's not the Bible. This is Warren's revelation when me and God talked one night. He said, every time you sin, you crucify me. Why? That scared me. Every time you picked up that crap pipe, you be crucified. When are you going to start putting me on the throne and you on the cross? Mm. Mm, come on. I've been telling you to stop it, stop it, stop it. You don't stop. You don't listen to me. You talk like you love me. And every time you put yourself on that throne and me back on the cross, I said, God, I don't want to crucify you no more. I just don't. Because I love you. Well, if you love me, obey me. Amen. 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 Do y'all love him? Yes, sir. Amen. Ooh, that was a week. Yeah. Ooh, that's what I'm saying. Some of you still got to work on it because you still love the condition you're in. And you don't even believe that Jesus can bring you up. And that's why you have teachers and preachers and those who minister to you to show you he can. Amen? Amen. I'm not telling you this is an easy process, man. It's not. How can you love something you don't see? How can you love something you don't see? But watch this. When you begin to love him, he will show you him. You will begin to see him. He will be so real to you and be just like you talk to your best friend. But that shows you what your love level is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, let's go to John 5. Gospel of John, chapter 5. And we look at a few of those scriptures, and then we move on to Stephanie. Uh, I hope y'all getting something out of this. I feel a heavy spirit in here, especially where the unforgiveness part is. For some reason, there's a lot of people here, and I know it. Y'all are walking in unforgiveness. Let it go. Let it go. Ask God to help you let it go. If a family member hurts your wife, a husband, kids, let it go. Turn them over to Jesus. Turn them over to Jesus. I know men who have been here with them dead now because they wouldn't let it go. Some of y'all know them too. They're dead now. I know at least three people since I've been here and I've been here almost, what, two years now? And I walk with these guys, slept in the same beds around here with you fellas, and I know at least three since I've been here that are dead because they wouldn't let it go. You know what I mean? Do you want to have a heart attack and stroke over something ridiculous? Come on. You know how it's the easiest way to let it go, men and women? Start walking the walk of Jesus Christ. And watch him restore things to you that you never thought would happen in your life. I'm getting ready to go home next month. And they're finally going to ordain me. And you know why I'm not that? I'm excited about it, but I'm not overwhelmed about it. You know why I'm not overwhelmed about it? Because I finally resolved myself in the real identity that I have. My real identity is your brother. I am a Christian. I am Jesus' bride. So y'all have a problem with being called a bride, you know what you mean. Until you learn how to be a bride, you ain't going to be no good husband. <laughs> Why? Because he said, I'm coming back for my bride. You know what bride is? Blameless. Hmm. Before God. Someone who knows how to, what? Sweet talk Jesus. Someone who is, oh, come on now, until you learn how to be a bride, man, because y'all equating bride with a woman. Or someone you give orders to. Hmm. That's not a bride. Check your scripture. Both men and women will be the bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. So, until you learn how to be a bride, you ain't going to be a good husband or a good wife. Amen? Amen? But I had to learn these things, and it took some time. Believe me, every step I'm talking about was a hurting experience because I saw other people get promoted before me become ministers and elders and pastors. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? But God knew my heart. 
Now, after 15 years, I'm going home and they want to date me. But was I looking for the ordination? Yes and no. You know why it's not that important? The main thing that mattered to me was the person that trained me, validated me. How many of you like to know when your boss walked in and did a good job? Amen. Right? Now, I know Pastor was out there around them. I've been down here for four years. They don't see the hell I put those people through. Or the teachers, because I've been with them for 15 back in Philadelphia. They saw my relapses. They saw my failure. They saw all this. Y'all get the end result of hell. Amen. I didn't come down here pristine and pure. I didn't come down here disciplined and in order. I had a trial before I came to Montgomery. So I said, I won't even feel right if, if they ordained me down here. I want the person I put through hell to validate me. And he said, I'm your dad and I'm going to do it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do it. Amen. 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 Ain't nothing like getting validation from your spiritual parent or parents, period. How many do you validate your kids? Even your father, come on, it is, kids look for their parents no matter how old we get. We look for our parents to validate, good job, son, good job, daughter. Don't it make you feel good? Yeah. And if we don't do it, we want to put that non-validation on our own children. I don't care what you want, but you tell them kids they want to be the best. Yeah. You tell them kids they can be anything they want. Yeah. You tell them kids they are great, they are fantastic, you're a queen, you're, you're a king. You tell them. Don't speak no negativity to your children. But validation I've been hunting for for years. I never got it from my mama. I never got it from my father. My mother was mentally retarded. She loved me, but she didn't know what validation meant. But she loved me. But men always look for validation from men, especially our fathers. Don't we, brothers? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So I'm finally going to get it, and I thank God for it. All right, what did I say? John 5? Yeah. Boy, y'all took me in another little area today. John 5, verse 14 says, Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. Sin no more, unless a worse thing come upon you. Amen. Because you know that's just God's mercy following you around all the time, especially the unsaved. That's just the mercy following. Amen? Amen. Go to John 8. John 8, and verses 10 and 11. When Jesus had lifted up his, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Neither do I condemn you. You know, that's a strange story. One of these days, I wish I could preach on that. Because they were getting ready to stone her. And the same person that committed adultery where had a stone in his hand. You know, the background book said it was a Pharisee. They accused her of adultery, but they didn't accuse him. Why was that? See? <laughs> he was standing right there with a stone. But I love that because the only one who could have threw a stone that could throw it, who was who? Jesus, because he said, he who is without sin, throw the first stone. He's the only one. He was the only one who put through that stone. Amen? What is that right? <laughs> All right, let's go to, uh, let me grab this. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Let me skip through some. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. I'm going to try not to hold y'all here. We got 